Oh, that was a silly move. Knocked all the bloody screws out. Good morning, folks. We're starting low and slow on the vlog today because we have to install the new transformer into the uh, cooling unit for the cold rooms and I've also been spending more time putting right the wrongs from our previous accountant what a twat he's left us a right mess you know so that's gonna take a little bit of my day up today unfortunately but at least we can get a couple of jobs ticked off the list and the first one I'll make sure we're turned off the first one being getting this cold room up and running and putting this whole repair job to bed because I'm getting sick of it quite frankly so what I'm gonna do is just extend this earth lead to clip onto the body somewhere there should be a little adapter somewhere and uh, pop in the live and neutral to the 240 side of this transformer it's a lovely bit of kit by the way it's very nice it looks a lot more sturdy than the thing that we took out and uh, yeah well we'll get a wired in and we'll test her out I'm hoping, oh, I'm hoping I can tear this for a start, well, maybe not, I'm not strong enough and I don't have a knife, hold on, oh bugger, alright then, well, we'll come back to that, so yeah, let's get this installed anyway, and uh, well I'll show you the finished article, once we've got it up and running, provided, indeed that it runs. Well we've clicked on down there and as expected we've clicked on up here so yeah it's definitely a winner did cost me a little bit more than I wanted to spend because it turns out Robbie had one spare but uh, this was already in the post so cheers anyway Rob maybe next time buddy So I've moved the grain and the bottles out of the way because as you know yesterday I started a little bit of welding and I've decided to finish off the tacking which I've done this morning and then it's kind of led me on to thinking well I could pretty much carry on tacking all of the welds that I need to do until I run out of argon in this bottle and even if I start to uh, back purge and weld them up if it goes on me it goes on me. So. I've actually got one of the tanks out. We've got, the, got it laid on its back. And I've been in there with some equipment to try and find the correct angle to install our takeoff valve assembly. So it turns out that the best place for it to be is 300 mil down from the top of the seam. Unfortunately, they put the seam of the cone on the front of this tank which I think was a mistake. It's on the front of all of them actually. But I'm pretty sure I can work with it. I can weld around that. So I'm gonna pull the plasma out. I'm gonna draw a hole on all these tanks. And we're gonna punch a hole in them and weld the male RJT on. And also the same with the lids while I'm at it. So 10 holes to cut in five lovely lacking tanks. This is one of the lids to the fermenters. And I've roughly found the center where we're gonna punch or cut with the plasma torch a hole to put a male, this is a liner. We're gonna put a male RJT fitting on the top like that. And we can put a spray ball inside. And once we've got the rest of the fittings on the tank, 
we can start to recirculate a little bit of nitrous SID to try and get rid of all of the uh, base down deposits on the inside of these tanks because they're absolutely caked in it from obviously the previous owners. So if you want to try and find the centre of a circle, the easiest thing to do is to draw a line anywhere on the circle as long as it intersects the circumference twice. You just draw a line. You don't even have to draw a line end to end as long as you've got a straight bit where you can put a right angle on. And then you want to measure how far it is from said circumference intersection to the other one. This happens to be 700 mil. So I mark a little point at 350. And then at that 350 mark, I'll take a square and we'll just draw a line up where we think the centre of the circle is. Then you come to another side, it can be anywhere else in the circle that you like. Same thing again, line across, tape measure all the way from one side of the circle to the other. That's 800 mil, little mark at 400, square on. And where that line intersects the previous one in the middle, bingo, you found your centre. If you want more accuracy, do more external lines intersecting the circumference. It's dead easy. So now I've found the centre of my workpiece, I'm going to go ahead and get the plasma torch. I've not used this for a while, so it might be a bit of a shaky wonky cut. Let's see if we can get the camera in a really good position to take in what we're going to do here. And, uh, well, let's put our glasses down and get started. I think I'm just going to blast through maybe there. And we're in. Just like that. A little bit of hot swirl there. So now, we'll just go around the edge. Right now the compressor's stopped. There you can see we've got the lovely little hole cut out up the centre. And I put a piece of ply on here to prevent scorching the table, but it's set fire to the ply pretty much. So for the next one, I'll just drop a piece of tile there. That'll just bounce the sparks away. So that's one done. All we need to do is hit that now with the uh, with the burr in the rotary tool or Dremel, whatever you've got, and uh, clean that edge up ready for tacking on the uh, male RJT. So I'm just going to repeat the process until all five lids are done. So they don't last very long, if you're careful with them, 
you can get quite a few cuts out of a tip but uh, I touched this one to the surface quite a few times and it got stuck and you can see it's melted so it's about that far away from the tip of the plasma torch that means that uh, you get a load of blue plasma and a really really messy cut they're cheap though about 50 pence each right so I've set up with the compressor and uh, the old, um, and I forget what these are called, I keep calling them a rotary tool, uh, but it's basically an air drill. So I'm going to use this to clean up the hole that we've just made and uh, get it ready for attaching or tacking on the fittings that we require. So I'm going to sit down here, you know, nothing special really, I'm just going to sit on this stool and make sure I get all all the mess and whatever else out of this hole tidy it up a little bit right I've just spent a few hours cutting all of these components pieces of steel little bits of tube holes in blanking plates all that kind of stuff and well, while I'm tacking and welding I may as well do everything everything that we need for all the tanks and then that's the welding out of the way all we have to do is worry about getting the cooling side sorted out and cleaning off the beer stem and then insulating the tanks but as long as they're watertight we can begin the cleaning process that's my thoughts so uh, just got to clean up these blanking plates that I've literally just cut with the plasma cutter and then we're going to start tacking things together it's kind of nice to see the cold rooms all working we've got the end one turned off because we've moved everything across into the other ones so I'm just about to finish off welding the lids for these tanks but all the other fittings as you can see are there five fittings for five tanks plus the sight glass the diaphragm valve and the adapter I might be making another adapter actually uh, we shall see and all I have to do is pop these bad boys on here on the other side of course from underneath but the best side to get the weld on is here so I have to kind of clamp them on the underside and then weld them from this side easy and then that's another day done I should be home already it is half past five but I'm here just to get this done because I just fancy finishing it and then I can have a relaxed Friday, somewhat. So to provide at least a little bit of content for today, uh, I'm welding these male RJTs. That wobbles a bit, doesn't it? What's going on there? I'm well, anyway, I'm welding. Welding these male RJTs onto this lid. And the gap between here is so tight I can't actually get a TIG torch in there so what I've done instead is I've taken the torch and I've increased the tungsten dramatically so we've got an inch of stick out there now this is going to damage the tungsten or at least blue it, it's already gone blue a little bit because I've just done one so in order to protect the welder a little bit more I've set the pre-flow to half a second uh, to make sure that there's plenty of shielding gas around the tip and the workpiece before the arc strikes and then all we're doing is putting a little tack in and then we're pulling away uh, and holding the post flow gas for three seconds over the weld until it's cooled and then because this is a CIP port for the tank the outside doesn't matter it really doesn't matter it's the inside that's got to be sanitary so once we've tacked this on here 
we'll then flip the whole shebang over and we'll put a box on the back, we'll fill it with argon and then we'll weld from the inside out so the inside of this weld will be perfectly sanitary and the outside will just be flowed so there won't be any actual seam on the outside. So let's go ahead and make a start. So first thing I want to do is eyeball the uh, position Then I've just got to pull the foot pedal towards me a little bit because I've lost it with the camera being in the way. So then I have to get right down underneath the actual fitting, strike the arc, come in with the filler rod and the filler rod, as I'm dabbing the filler rod in there melts and flows across all the surfaces almost like metal glue connecting the fitting to the lid so I'm just going to spin it round and put another tack on the other side Doing it this way means that I will have a little bit of coking on the other side of the fitting but because we can get to it no problem on the other side we'll just whack it with the flapper disc to get rid of it and then fill it with good weld. So in with the filler rod and out and then holding the post flow over the area and there we go, that's the second lid tacked on. It sounds quite simple but in reality it is quite tricky to get in there. You have to have a steady hand otherwise you're just going to tack yourself, tack your tungsten to the workpiece. And there we have it, five lids stacked like discs of stainless steel ready to be finished off on the inside. Tomorrow we'll get all of these fittings done as well. That's a bloody good shot that is, isn't it, to be fair. So they're going to be ready to go in the tank once we've got them welded and pickled. Which won't be bloody long, let me tell you that, babby. So I'm just going to go next door, have a pint of cider, sit in the beer garden, wait for Gemma to pick me up. I was going to go for a run tonight. I should be going for a run every night because we have a race on the 26th or 23rd of June in Leeds one of them obstacle course things that Stuart's booked me into uh, not an Iron Man thing, it's like one of the Total Warrior I think it's called imagine me hauling my fat ass over all them obstacles oh it's gonna be funny anyway I'm gonna drown that thought with a pint of cider and then go home edit the video and I've got some vacant gesture on tap so I needn't worry myself about these silly little things. I'll see you tomorrow. It's freaking Friday tomorrow. Oh, I've got to go and vote as well. You know what it's for. <laughs>